Hi everyone and special welcome to my patrons on Patreon because this month we are learning how to access our imagination through veil painting and also to find out how we can really use our imagination to look into tonal spaces of color and see what is being suggested to us rather than taking a reference and copying something that we think we might like to paint. So in this case, I never expected to have this theme of the person holding the mirror and the viewer looking into the mirror as well as the person holding it themselves. And now I am figuring out through my various light veils how the actual posture of the person is and what's happening with the face. And that's what I want to look at today is the face specifically. And I'm going to be showing you how you can use a very small brush like this one or a, a brush with a flat surface like this one to create all the forms that we want right in there. So let's get started. Okay, everyone, I'm going to start out by just adding a little clean water to my plates because that may have evaporated a little bit while I was painting. And that way we'll be able to get the quality of the tone that we want. And let's look right here into the face. You can see I've already started a little bit with the mouth and lips, and I've noticed that this peachy color, this peach blossom mixture of magenta and a cadmium orange, plus even a little yellow, creates this kind of peach blossom color. And I'm gonna use it here in the eye. The eyes are actually looking down. So we're mostly seeing the lid. And we can of course see the brow up there. The nose is over on this side of the face. And I'm basically working in this little peach blossom color wherever I think it might be helpful. To model the face. Gently model the face with color. Very gently, why? Because you don't want it to become jarring or look cartoonish in any way. The forehead's going back, so I can always have my brush go the direction that I want the lines to go. And we have more of a shadowed quality on this side of the face, all the way down into the chin. Now you do see areas of light, almost white, in the face, and those are good to leave. In fact, I do have this paint, this little bit of white here, and I like to sometimes come through with the white just to show, for example, where the highlight on the tip of the nose would be, or in the brow bones. And you can see that there's light in through here, the cheekbone, even onto this side of the face, and this chin line. Down here, we might have a little bit lighter color. And that's how tiny we have to work. Now, if we want to do something, say, in this hand over here, which is a little... If we want to do something over here in this hand, which is a little bit larger space, we can take a larger brush and simply go over the veil very loosely and allow the form of the hand to appear gradually. I can tell 
that the thumb itself is going to need to come up a little higher. I can see that this pointer finger will be higher than these fingers coming down, holding the mirror. But um, basically, I can just follow what my imagination tells me the picture is doing. Now we've paid a lot of attention up here in the face, in the hands and so on, but let's look to some of the background spaces which are equally as important to the fabric of the composition. And right down here in the leg, I want you to notice there are different colors in this part of what I would call the leg. And so now I'm gonna paint them a little bit, showing you how we can just accentuate certain veils that, for example, indicate purple. And, I'll, and let's look for the spaces of color that say green to us. So in the leg as well, and maybe even using it for this contour of what will be the rump. <laughs> the rump. Now, in order to ground the picture, looking into the background spaces, we can see that there are some tonal differences that could be deepened, particularly out towards the periphery. Let's take the black and start on the edge here and work our way towards the figure getting lighter and lighter as we reach the figure, perhaps even leading our eye right up in to what is the hair. We can soften an edge if we want by going over it with the brush, just like that, but we may want a certain amount of crispness. Where else could there be a crisp veil? Perhaps over here in this peach blossom area. Let's get a step deeper on the brush and sweep in. And notice how I have a gesture of the leg going back to the upper left and here this gesture opposing going to the upper right, creating a tension here, which leads our eye into the tension that exists holding this large mirror back here. And I'm gonna bring that color a little bit to relate right in here, grounding this side of the picture. We can also work within a space in a lower portion, for example, in the knee and the calf. 
to bring the eye down. Every time we deepen a veil, we take the eye into that color space. Sometimes these veils will be very thin. And just worked into the space behind. And other times you're going to want to take your brush, mix up a large amounts of paint and sweep into the picture. If you get a drip like that, just wash off your brush, dry it, and use the dry brush to wick away the paint. Right? Mm -hmm. um, Works for me. Do you want to talk about the people at all? Not really. I mean, I could start to talk about this picture and what it means and stuff to me. Yeah, but let's do that later. I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to comfortable doing that. I think that's fair. It's it's very personal. Um, for me, they're, they're almost like souls who have crossed over, you know? I know. And um, what I've discovered with mirror, though, that's kind of interesting, is that everything in the mirror can be pretty high definition. Right. Mm hmm And everything else can be sort of like washed away. Yeah, you should put a veil on the pathway so we can really see it up there. Yeah, I'm going to. Um, and it's kind of interesting to, to note that. Oh, that light back there is so good. This? Yeah. I know, I love that too love that because it reflects what might be happening for the viewer too mm -hmm. Ooh, that got very red i'm gonna have to lift that up. and around here i was thinking that it could be really deep green Something about the Viridian green is very kind of like otherworldly. I know. Like kind of like, you know, I sort of see it like death. This whole shadow quality business, mm -hmm. it's very, very death-like, right? Mm -hmm. It takes you into that realm of... Shadow. <clears throat> yeah. And not what we humans like to live in, uh -uh. mostly. That's why this is such an uncomfortable picture in yeah. a way. Okay, now I do want to get into the, the um, pathway. You could even do it black, I feel like. Yeah. I know, right? I was gonna mix up a little bit of black and green together. Is it a winding path or a straight path? It's more winding, huh? Mm. See? Yeah. It looks like a boardwalk when you do it like that. It's interesting. So it's not a paved path, it's like a depressed in the ground <laughs> path. Not depressed, like depressed like a... Yeah, it's... Like it's just created by so many people walking. 
is what I'm seeing. Yeah. It's not like paved. <laughs> no, it's natural. Yeah. I think the frame has to be darker. Mm -hmm. At least behind it. Like, there needs to be something grounding the frame, too, I think. Yeah. It needs to stand out, doesn't it? Oh, I didn't see it really with edges, and now... Oh, yeah. you didn't? No. Well, see, that's why I've been doing this round thing all the time. It's the frame. Yeah, I guess I just thought it was a, a mirror without the frame. I don't know. It's kind of weird because these people become the path, you know? Yeah. But they just become it. So are they there, like, in here? And this then would get blended out. But it, up here, I want it to stay pink. Oh. And that arm is too green, but <clears throat> we'll get to it. So what's really kind of amazing about the way the picture is developing is that I'm not using any reference material other than friends and family who can model for me every now and then holding a mirror. <laughs> no, nobody's held a mirror for me, but at least get in positions where I can sort of copy it. And what I want you to know is this kind of painting will develop your imagination because you gradually come to the finished product rather than starting with something that is finished perhaps in your imagination you're allowing your imagination to experience what's actually happening as you paint it so thank you so much for joining along and please stay tuned as this painting develops <laughs>